The Mach 5 was one of my favorite daily trainers of 2022. And for 2023, Hoka is giving us a mutated variant in the Mach X. It brings Piba foam, a P-Bax plate, and a max cushion stack height. But does newer and bigger mean better? It's time to lace up the Mach X and take it for a run. Yo, what's going on everybody? My name is Kopuzi and I'm a non-elite runner who views shoes here on YouTube. And today I wanna to talk to you guys about the Hoka Mach X. But before I give you my thoughts on this shoe, I do wanna go over some disclosures. This is a pair of shoes that Hoka sent to me for the purpose of review, so I didn't have to pay for these shoes. However, they're not paying me to make this video or to use the shoe, and they're not gonna get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with that disclosure out of the way, let's talk about the Hoka Mach X. And first let's go over some specs on the shoe. This is a tall one. It comes in at 39 millimeters of stack height in the heel with a five millimeter drop, giving us 34 millimeters of stack height in that forefoot. And in this shoe, we've got three different components. This top layer, this lighter colored foam is the Piba layer. That is a racing caliber foam. It's some of the best materials you can put into a running shoe these days. And on the bottom layer, there is a layer of EVA, which is kind of some of the more standard type of material that you might find in a running shoe. And in between those two layers, there is a P-Bax plate. So the same material as the upper, but just formulated into a different composition. So it has more like plate-like properties to it and that's going to be in between those two layers and you can see that plate in through this little cutout window that's on the bottom of the shoe. Now protecting the EVA layer on this shoe is Hoka's Dura Abrasion Rubber. There's a good amount of coverage in this forefoot but there are cutouts to help to make the shoe bend a little bit easier and then there's some exposed foam towards the end as well. In this shoe we have a swallow tail design which is reminiscent of the regular non-X version of the Mach series of shoe but because this is an X version and because there's some Piba in here they've kind of made it a lot more aggressive of design splitting the left and the right parts of the heel. On the upper, we have a jacquard mesh, which keeps things nice and breathable while also providing a good amount of durability. The tongue is very thin on this shoe, but there is a large pad kind of where the laces crisscross on top of the forefoot. So that you're getting a little bit of protection from any excess pressure that the laces may otherwise cause and this tongue is gusseted on both sides. Moving around to the heel cup, you've got a little bit of structure back here at the bottom part of the heel, and that flares up into this Achilles flare that moves kind of into a little bit of a pinch, which we've seen in a couple of other different Hoka shoes in the past. Altogether, this shoe comes in a weight that is respectable for its size, 9.4 ounces or 266 grams for the men. Although Hoka is reporting those weights at a size 10, my US men's size nine came in a little bit lighter at 9.2 ounces and 260 grams. Okay, now with those specs taken care of, let's talk about what it was actually like to run in this shoe. And I feel like overall, this is a really good shoe. The Piba in this foam is very pleasant to run in. Uh, it provides a great amount of absorption of impact when your foot hits the ground. And there's a nice amount of spring to the shoe as well. And then the EVA carrier that kind of sits around the shoe, especially kind of in this under the arch region, it curls up and around the softer Piba midsole top layer. It prevents the shoe from letting your ankles turn in too far one way or the other. I had this shoe out in a variety of paces and I felt like it was a lot of fun to run in anywhere between easy pace all the way up to 10K pace and everything in between. Now I do have some critiques about this shoe as well and the critiques aren't necessarily so much directed at this shoe in and of itself, but I think it's because its biggest problem isn't that the shoe isn't good. I think the biggest problem that the shoe has is that it needs to be better than the Mach 5. The Mach 5 was one of my favorite daily trainers of last year. So in order to kind of justify having a Mach X, it needs to be a better elevated version. And that's where I think some of the, like the critiques and the nitpicking that I have about this shoe kind of starts to creep in. And the, the main kind of drawback that I think that this shoe suffers is that I don't feel like the P-Bax plate was the right choice for this shoe. I feel like what the P-Bax plate does in the forefoot, I think is doing a lot the, the same things that the EVA does 
in the rear of the shoe is that it's stabilizing the Piba foam. Now, one of the things that people have a problem with when they have super soft and squishy foams that travel a lot whenever you compress them is that sometimes if you're not landing exactly squarely on top of it, it can start to feel a little bit unstable and that can be an unnerving experience for some runners. Personally, I always tell brands whenever they'll listen is to make shoes squishier and squishier. Make me think that I might hurt my ankle running in the shoe and that's when I feel like we're on the right track in terms of a shoe that's gonna be exciting, squishy, fun, and peppy to be able to run in. And I feel like because there's so many stabilizing elements in this shoe, you've got that firmer EVA carrier, you get that P-Bax plate. I feel like we're losing a lot of the excitement that Piba can otherwise bring to a shoe. And so every time that I started picking up the pace in the shoe, it was fun because the shoe turned over well. It's got that early stage meta rocker in the shoe. All these things helped make the shoe nice and peppy, but I feel like it just kind of lacked a little bit of oomph to it. It lacked a little bit of a sense of, of power and springiness that I really felt like a shoe that's called the Mach X really could have brought to the table. So when it came down to doing speed work, when I was doing threshold repeats, I really felt like I was losing just a little bit because of the way that the shoe is kind of dampening the running experience. And then at moderate paces, like when I was running around marathon effort, I felt like I didn't get the full kind of decompression that spring back of the Piba foam that I was really hoping that I would get. But I really feel like the Pbax plate I think what it's doing is it's stabilizing that forefoot cushion at the expense of a little bit of excitement and a little bit of pep at that moderate effort. And for easy paces, I felt like the shoe was really great, but the problem with having this shoe being really great at easy paces is that the Mach 5 exists and this is also a really great shoe for easy paces. And I think at easy paces, I prefer the super critical layer of the Mach 5 over the Piba layer in the Mach X because I just feel like there's no plate in the Mach 5 and I feel like that lets the foams be a little bit more springy even if it makes them a little bit less stable. And if I could step into the mind of Hoka for just a moment and speculate a little bit, I'm guessing what they thought is they could take the Mach 5 and that exciting squishiness, elevate it with a brand new foam, but then at the same time also stabilize it a little bit with that EVA carrier, with that p -backs plate, and make it a shoe that's even more exciting and more broadly approachable to a wider range of runners. I feel like they're trying to make too many people happy with this shoe and Ultimately for me, I feel like it falls just a little bit flat. And there's still one other thing that's kind of confusing me and disappointing me just a little bit about these two shoes. These two shoes are both Mach. This is the Mach 5 and this is the Mach X. And we're supposed to appreciate one as being related to the other, but they fit very differently. You can even just see from the way that the shoes are laced that the volume in these shoes is very different. The Mach X felt very snug to me and I'm gonna recommend for most people to size up half a size because these felt a little bit too snug, not only in terms of space that I had on the sides of my toes, but also in terms of volume up at the top of the shoe as well. If you look at the way that my Mach 5 is laced, and I haven't untied them from the last time I ran in them, uh, there's almost a puckering that's happening at the top over here, and also these two sides of the laces are like almost touching each other. And so I feel like that was a critique that I had of the Mach 5, that the sizing was a little bit off, the shape and volume of the shoe was a little bit off, but I feel like in changing from the Mach 5 to the Mach X, they went in the total opposite direction and now like there's just not enough space in the shoe. So I think most people are going to have to size up. So. All those kind of critiques aside, and it feels like I've been critiquing this shoe a lot because I think I've spent more time talking about the things that are a little bit confusing or that I find a little bit disappointing about the shoe. And I don't want it to detract from the fact that I do think that Hoka has made a really good shoe here. So let's summarize a little bit. I feel like the Hoka Mach X is best for people who are looking for a springy modern shoe, but don't want it to be too squirrely underfoot. It's gonna be a really great daily trainer that you could take for your long runs and use all the way up through speed work as well. But now let's compare it to some other shoes that exist out there on the market and then talk about my buying recommendations for this shoe. Now, here's kind of like another area where I'm gonna speculate a little bit. I think that what Hoka was trying to do is build something that's kind of like the Nike Invincible 3. This is a shoe that is tall stack height and uses a Piba midsole foam, but this is only a Piba foam. And I feel like this works very successfully at everything from easy pace up to 
to marathon effort. And I feel like it's a really versatile shoe that a lot of people have been enjoying running in. Now, when I saw the Mach X though, I felt like what I was expecting was going to be something more like the Asics Super Blast, which is a racing foam on the top, no plate, and then a daily training midsole foam on a bottom layer to help stabilize the shoe. But that's not really what I got either. And what I was kind of secretly hoping for is that we would have something that reminded me more of the Nike Peg Turbo, which had a racing foam up top, a midsole EVA layer on bottom, and no plate in between. It was a low stack height shoe that was surprisingly capable for everything between track sessions and your 20 mile long runs. But I don't think we got really any of that with the Hoka Mach X. And I think that the two shoes that I think I can compare it to most is going to be one, the Mach 5, I feel like is the most natural competitor that I feel like we have to compare it to. But outside of the brand, if you're trying to figure out what the Mach X feels like, I feel like the other shoe that it feels most closely like in my mind is the Puma Deviate Nitro 2. Now this is a shoe that uses a carbon fiber plate and a premium racing foam, Puma's Nitro Elite foam, and puts it into kind of a daily trainer package. I feel like it's been a highly underrated shoe over the last year, and I've really been enjoying it for everything from easy runs all the way up to threshold pace speed sessions. So kind of up to like half, between half marathon and 10K pace, I feel like this shoe can really handle a lot of miles. And I feel like that's where the Hoka Mach X kind of fits in as well. And I feel like the ride dynamics and the feeling that you're getting underfoot is very similar with the biggest difference in sensation between the Mach X and the Deviate Nitro 2 being the fact that the Deviate Nitro 2 has a carbon fiber plate and you're getting a little bit of that peppiness from the carbon fiber plate that I find to be a little bit lacking with the P-Bax plate in the Mach X. Now, in terms of the buying guide and recommendations, the Mach X is available now, I believe, already, and it's gonna be retailing at $180. The Mach Five is still in most places at full retail price of $140, so quite a bit less expensive than the Mach X. And the Nitro 2 retails at $160, so you've got $140, $160, and then $180 for the Mach X. At $180, which is the same price as the Invincible 3, I feel like the shoe is a little bit difficult for me to recommend to a lot of people. If you're the type of person who looked and ran in the Mach X, or maybe a shoe like the Nova Blast 3, and just thought it was way too squishy for you, and you felt like your ankles were all over the place, you're the person that I feel like the Mach X is really going to make a lot of sense for. If you enjoyed the squishy excitingness of the Mach 5 or Nova Blast 3, then I'm thinking that 180 for the Mach X at the full retail price probably isn't going to be for you. But let's say you do want to pick up the Mach X and what I've said that's good about this shoe is music to your ears. And I do think that there are going to be a decent number of you out there that think that. Here's some shoes that I feel like you can pair the shoe with to build a rotation around. I think from a racing perspective, I think the obvious choice is the brand new Rocket X2. This is an all PIBA shoe with a carbon fiber plate. I feel like there are a lot of similarities in terms of the early stage meta rocker and then the way that the PIBA feels in these shoes that I feel like training in one is going to give you a really nice racing sensation in the other and vice versa. And I think for your longer run days or maybe your recovery run days, I think that the shoe that you're really going to like is the Bondi X or the regular Bondi, but I'm really thinking that the Bondi X is going to appeal to you. It just rolls a little bit better. And I also feel like the EVA that they're using in the Bondi X is slightly softer than the EVA that they're using in the regular levels of Bondi. So I feel like that's gonna be the shoe that I'm recommending for you. And if you have any other questions about the Hoka Mach X, let me know in the comments down below or better yet, stop by the live stream that I do Monday through Friday right here on YouTube over on the Kofuzi Run Club channel. I'd love to see you guys in the chat. And that's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of this video. Hope you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I'll see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?